This is Charles Fort in Kinsale. It is named after King Charles II of England. At Kinsale was a great siege. It was part of the holy wars and schisms that raged across continental Europe and has since divided much of the world. The Spanish Armada landed at Kinsale to reinforce Irish chieftains, and they quickly fortified an old stronghold called Barry Oak Castle. Barry, a chieftain whose name spreads all over West Cork, pushed back the initial Viking invasions centuries earlier, keeping the lands under Gaelic rule. The Irish chiefs O'Neill and O'Donnell marched from Donegal south. Donegal in Irish is Dun na Gaul, the fort of the Gauls. A few pockets of they that once fought the mighty Roman Empire are still found. The same wars are being fought endlessly. Hugh Roe O'Donnell escaped from Dublin Castle after being held without trial for five years. He wished for Irish lands to remain Irish, and he was prepared to butcher his enemies for his beliefs, and was held captive by a foreign people who wished for his homelands to be theirs. He asked his father-in-law, Hugh O'Neill of Tyrone, to create an alliance of Irish clans to remove the English crown's power on the island of Ireland. Queen Elizabeth I was the ruling monarch of the United Kingdom. She understood how fragile her power was. She executed her own cousin, Queen Mary of Scots, due to her insecurities of power and differences in faith. Protestant England was at war with Catholic Spain. King Philip III, King of Spain, continued his father's war with Queen Elizabeth and aided Irish chieftains in their rebellion against the English crown. The second Earl of Essex landed in Ireland to quench this rebellion with 17,000 troops. Several Irish chieftains assumed Ireland would lose and allied with the British crown, and they were each quickly surrounded and were each slaughtered in their treasonous houses. All English forces on the island were called to the aid of their father and allies, and regain each stronghold. The English were utterly destroyed at Curlew Pass, led by the passionate patriotism of Hugh Roe O'Donnell. It was the heaviest defeat the English had suffered in Ireland up to that point. Most of the island was now wrested from the crown. The Tyrconnell chiefs continued on south after their immense victory, gathering force and gathering masses. A storm raged off the coast of Cork, and nine ships of the Spanish Armada, under the command of Dan Juan de la Guela and Don de Diego Brochero were forced to return to Spain with the majority of guns, cannon and veteran troops. 4,000 men could still manage to disembark at Kinsale. They quickly got to work fortifying Barry Old Castle, setting up their defence. This defence was prized by King Philip III of Spain as it opened up another front during the Anglo-Spanish War. He was willing to send much to drain the British crown coffers and have a holy Catholic continent. As word of the Spanish landing spread along with tales of Irish rebels massacring men of the crown, the jewel of the British crown, which was Dublin, was forced to be left vulnerable and weakened. Charles Blount and Lord Mountjoy left the Pale in order to not lose the entire island. Kinsale was soon becoming the location of a world-changing event. The Irish chiefs arrived. They took good ground, where they could see the now besieged Spanish forces, and could also begin to devise a plan that would leave them battle ready. Half of the English force was rendered incapable of fighting through the Irish winter and lengthy siege. Lord Mountjoy's force took some high ground, and put the sieged Spaniards under constant artillery fire. The English cavalry rode through the countryside, murdering and destroying livestock and crops to further stress in the surrounding area. O'Donnell and O'Neill successfully cut all supply lines and communication across the island. The English were dying of dysentery and fever. They could not hold out forever. Spanish reinforcements arrived and they landed three miles from Charles Fort. The Irish then surrounded the English camp in the middle of the night. The English situation was dire and then the fog of war clouded movements and all was noted and decisions were made. Skirmishes broke out on ridge lines, in bogs and on open ground. Many men were not battle ready and caused even more confusion. The Irish were shouting in triumph. The English reformed squadrons, fired shot, loosed volleys and unhorsed many Irish. O'Neill's men grew disorganised and were routed by the English cavalry. They were put to the sword. Word of the rout returned to Lord Mountjoy and flanks were charged. The Irish began to retire and regroup. The Spanish closed ranks and were surrounded by horse. They were trampled underfoot and Spanish flags began to fall. They continued to fight and defend fiercely for their lives with pike, but were ultimately hacked to pieces. The initiative was now for the English. They resumed their encirclement of Kinsale. Don de la Lagua saw a situation as hopeless and surrendered Kinsale to Lord Mountjoy. They sailed back to Spain only to find reinforcements were already on their way. After hearing the news, the entire Spanish armada returned to Spain. Hugh O'Donnell arrived at the 
battlefield to find O'Neill and the Spanish had left. O'Neill had shown too much caution at the decisive moment. O'Donnell was undeterred. He could see a great picture. He took ship and went to Spain to amass a great force. Many earls returned to Donegal and finally surrendered to the crown. Spain and England agreed to peace. O'Donnell was poisoned in Spain where he then died. O'Neill's invincibility was broken and he too went to Spain to try a mass of force years later to no avail. This moment was called the flight of the earls. King James I who succeeded Queen Elizabeth I took advantage of this lack of unification in Ireland to divide up territories left behind for himself and his people continuing the United Kingdom's golden age and enlightenment. King James I died and the power came to his son King Charles I. He married a devoutly Catholic woman named Henrietta Maria of France. His own grandmother was a devoutly Catholic woman, Mary Queen of Scots, the mother of King James I of England and King James VI of Scotland. It's amazing such a monumental war was fought at all. These internal family affairs caused much struggle and tribulation in King Charles I's life, he being executed eventually and the monarchy abolished to be replaced by the sole power of Oliver Cromwell, the Lord Protector of the United Kingdom. Oliver Cromwell eventually died. After he was buried and after living the life of a king and who had sole authority over the armies of the United Kingdom, he was buried among kings, he was given a stately funeral and mourned countrywide. The people awoke to the treasonous act of Oliver Cromwell, deposing their king and beheading him. They demanded justice. Oliver Cromwell was exhumed from his royal resting place he was tried, he was hung, he was beheaded, he was drawn and quartered, his limbs were thrown into rivers and his head was put on a pike just to show that the people are fickle and they may put you in power but they will just as quick take you out and destroy your lineage. They were in the mood for a monarchy again and Charles II was reinstated. He returned from his exile in France and took up the throne as monarch of the United Kingdom, at once getting to work, strengthening the fort that the Spanish had built 60 years prior at the Battle of Kinsale during his great grandmother's reign. The English achieved their century long goal of destroying the old Gaelic order, ridding Ireland of its clan system and troublesome chieftains. The Battle of Kinsale was devastating to Irish culture. The Gaelic aristocracy fled to many European royal households and the English filled the void left behind. 